Welcome back DBRV TV viewers, it is Chris Nichols here and we've got a fun quirky video for you today. We're going to give ourselves a challenge. We're heading to the camera store in Calgary right now. I'm going to buy the cheapest digital photo camera that I can get. Jordan's going to buy the cheapest video digital camera that he can get and then he's going to shoot the episode on this camera. I'm going to try to take some photos on the camera and uh, we'll just see what we get. It should be a fun one. The poor salesperson who gets stuck with us expecting a big sale is going to be sadly disappointed. Okay, so what's our total cost here, Stephanie? We got 100 bucks. 100 bucks for the XZ1, okay, that's not bad. That's our cheapest photo camera. And then the Safari 5, $70. And you're gonna get that, right, Chris? Nope. Okay, so my weapon of choice is gonna be the Olympus XZ1. I haven't used a point and shoot in a long time. This camera's 11 years old, but how much could digital technology change in 11 years, right? All right. But it has a decently bright lens. I'm excited to get back to a CCD sensor on this. And you know, actually this was a pretty high-end camera for its day. Now here's Jordan's camera. I think he's lucky because he gets a current camera. This is a Safari 5. This is basically a GoPro knockoff. He's gonna have to do separate sound sync, but you know, I think it's gonna be a challenge for him to use this today. Why don't we switch over to this now because we're shooting the whole episode on this camera. All right, Chris, let's shoot this thing. You know, on second thought, Jordan, it's minus 35. I really don't want to. Actually, the camera, the battery life, that's that's it. This camera can't handle the, the freezing temperatures. It's not me. So uh, I'm calling no. Let's go find a place we're allowed to shoot inside. I, this is for the camera's sake. Let's go do it. Okay, so we found a place where we can shoot where it's nice and warm. We're at the Calgary Farmer's Market. Always lots of fun photo opportunities here. We're gonna meet up our families as well and you know, just get some portraits and see what we see. Now, the camera actually handles quite well. It is compact. I do wish that there was something on the front grip here, though. It's a little bit slippery. Uh, at least I do have the texture rubber on the back where my thumb goes. That helps a little bit, but it's easy to pocket and carry around. Now, this actually has some really nice control rings. The front control ring's awesome. Using it for aperture, very easy to adjust it. On the back control ring, it's small, but that's working great. And as usual, I do have Olympus's fantastic, uh, you know, super control panel, hit the OK button brings up all my options to change my JPEG color settings or you know I can go through my ISOs, flash on and off, all that kind of stuff. Very easy to adjust. Having a zoom rocker, you know, tactile pop-up flash, having the control rings, the super control menu, it's just so much more intuitive and more fun to shoot photography with a camera like this. I honestly hate using smartphones and I still don't know why they haven't made the ergonomics better for photography, at least among the major players. So it's interesting getting a point and shoot back in my hands because I forgot how close these things can focus, but I'm liking the stability here as well. Having a bright lens means I don't have to crank the ISO up as high, but this also has sensor-based image stabilization, and that's been fantastic. Shooting down to 15th, 20th of a second, it still looks like I'm getting sharp pictures. So the sensor in this camera was actually pretty big for its time in a point and shoot. One over 1.63 inch sensor, and coupled with a 28 to roughly 112 millimeter zoom range with a 1.8 to 2.5 maximum aperture. I'm not gonna say you're gonna get shallow depth of field, but I mean, it still is a fairly bright lens with a fairly big sensor, given that it's a point and shoot camera. Now it is a CCD, haven't shot with that in a long time, but they typically give you really nice detail and interesting colors. So, you know, I've been having actually a lot of fun using this camera here today. Uh, the thing is, you know, they call this a point and shoot, but honestly, I think now smartphones have really achieved that true point and shoot kind of capability. I'm having fun with this camera because, you know, it's a fairly advanced camera. It has nice controls and I do have the knowledge to be able to use a lot of that extensively. You know, changing my aperture, having a little bit of fun with my color and stuff like that. But I still think for somebody that would just pick this camera up for the first time, there'd be a bit of a learning curve. Okay, but the key thing is, you know, shooting in these low light situations, I know how bad point and shoots normally are, uh, especially compared to what we take for granted as image quality nowadays. So I gotta get these files home, take a look at the RAWs, push them a little bit, see what we get. I also wanna see how Jordan's been doing on his Safari because I feel even worse for him. I have no idea what this footage looks like. I know it's been a headache for him all day today. So when you see us again, we'll have our final conclusions. 
Okay, so we're back at Chris's place, and you might have noticed just a smidge of a video quality upgrade here. <laughs> uh, I decided not to shoot it on the Safari. I'll explain why in a little bit. But Chris, you've now been able to play with some of the files from the Olympus. What? How did it hold up? Yeah, so I've already talked a little bit about how the handling experience was with the camera physically, but I wanted to play with some of the RAW files and just see how far the image quality has come in 11 years. And it's come a long way, absolutely. Let me just give that some context. A smartphone will destroy the XZ1 in every way, shape, and form when it comes to image quality. I mean, dynamic range, low light performance, those were, I would say, big weaknesses on the XZ1. First off, any camera you want to protect the highlights, but the XZ1 will clip very quickly, and of course, there's no recovering that. So I found I was constantly underexposing a lot of the images, but then bringing up the shadows, I don't have a lot of room. Noise creeps in really fast things get soft and mushy. So you really gotta watch contrast or just be okay losing it. And of course, on that same note, if I am shooting a low light situation, if I crank the ISO on the XZ1, it does get pretty soft and mushy, but in good light or when I can keep the ISO low, I was actually really impressed how well the CCD really does. Images are sharp and I actually really found the color to be quite beautiful. And in the long run with any kind of photography, you gotta look for interesting light. That's always gonna be the key to getting a good photograph. So I still had a lot of fun and I still like the results that I got out of the camera. It definitely had a unique look. Okay, so there's no technical reason why you would want to use a decade old point and shoot camera. But the thing that stood out to me is it seemed like you were having a lot of fun at the farmer's market. Clearly Olympus designed this to be a high end point and shoot. It's classy, it feels great in the hand. I love the manual controls and dials. It was just a fun shooting experience. And you know, you gotta remember too, like I got this brand new in a box for a hundred bucks. I mean, that's a rare experience, but these are not cheap point shoots from 2011. These were the creme de la creme and you could get some really nice cameras. Canon S100s, like Sony HX9Vs. I mean like used, refurb for, I don't know, free, but what about you, Jordan? Did you have fun with your Safari 5D? I feel like my experience with the Safari was slightly different from yours. Um, so buckle up and we're gonna have to get the sensor beep ready because I got some thoughts here. So Chris, I've used a lot of the older GoPro, so I kind of thought I knew what I was in for with this. And you know, it has a lot of terrible things when you're actually out shooting with it. The viewing angle is horrendous and you really wanna use these small cameras on weird angles, but then you can't see the screen at all and I couldn't actually get the app to install on my iPhone. Uh, but then the startup time is horrendous on this, but you wanna keep powering the camera down because the battery life is really, really bad on it. In terms of focus on this camera, it works just like a GoPro. There's no actual focusing on it. It's just from a specific distance to infinity is gonna be reasonably sharp, but that specific distance is actually quite far away from the camera on this. So I had Chris talking to camera a lot and he's just completely out of focus. And I could tell it was out of focus when I actually took a look at the video and that's when the absolute nightmares with this camera started. Uh, first of all, image quality is horrendous on this. I mean, indoors and in low light, I wasn't expecting it to be great, but when we're shooting outside in bright light, there's still no detail. They call it 4K and it looks like bad 1080p recording on this. But the biggest issue is this camera records its 4K at 30.3 frames per second, which I have never encountered after producing video for 15 years. And what that meant is Final Cut didn't understand these video files. Compressor, DaVinci Resolve, I couldn't get these files into anything. I had to completely rewrap them. When I did that, the sound and the video get completely out of sync. Okay, go for it. Okay, so Okay, so now my audio and video are out of sync, so I have to detach the audio and try and retime the video clips so that everything actually syncs out. And that's just so that I can sync it up with the crappy camera audio, but because I knew it was gonna be bad audio, I recorded it externally, but now my auto sync with the external device doesn't work because I've retimed the video and it's all f***ed up and my entire Saturday is just gone as I'm trying to shuffle these. I, I recorded like eight clips of Chris talking to camera. It was basically a day for me to edit all of that terrible footage together and I don't know how Safari thought that they could put this camera out on the market with this 30.3 frame rate issue and that it hasn't been immediately recalled after it came out and then after that process I notice in the very top corner that this camera by default will embed the date and time stamp information on your video clip, meaning I had to crop that horrible video in even more to get it out of this. This is the worst video experience I have ever had and I've been on some rough sets and I have been waking up screaming every okay, night. Okay, okay, so uh, mixed results for both of us here, but 
you know, for my part, I had such a good time with the Olympus XZ1. I could see myself, uh, you know, just when I want a palette cleanser from other photography to take it out for the day and just have a fun experience. And I'm totally gonna let the kids take it out and shoot. I mean, yeah, it's a fun way to just start playing with manual control. So really nice camera. I had a lot of fun. And uh, Jordan, you were saying that you actually, you know, your kid's into skateboarding stuff. He might like your Safari 5D. I love 5D. my son. I would never do that to him. Okay, so uh, thanks for joining us as always. Please leave your comments below. I'm sure a lot of them will be uh, very sympathetic to Jordan's plight. Check out dpreview.com for tons of other articles and we will both see you in the new year happy and healthy and we hope you guys have a great new year as well.